Hey guys, this is Chris. In this video, we're going to talk about design basics with Affinity Designer and we also talk about manual rasterization. In case you don't know what Affinity Designer is, it is a design software that is quite similar to Adobe Illustrator. So it's perfect for logos, illustrations and for most t-shirt designs. It is a subscription free model, so you only pay once, you don't have monthly payments, which makes it a great budget friendly alternative to Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. It starts at 20 euros for the iPad version, goes up to 180 euros or 200 dollars for the big bundle with Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, which is the Photoshop alternative and Affinity Publisher. Let's first start with creating a new file. I have presets already created, as you can see over here. If you don't have them, just click on your page size, like A4 or A3. If you click A4, you see your measurements over here. In millimeters, in my case, you can also have it in inches. Make sure it's 300 dpi. Color is CMYK. Make sure you click the box for the transparent background. Margins are disabled. Bleed is at zero. If everything is correct, hit create. Now we have created our blank canvas. We can recognize the transparent background by the checkerboard. To make it a little bit easier for us when we design, we create a background. We just click on the square symbol, draw a square on the background. We can change its color by clicking on the circle on the right hand side and just play with the Sigma K sliders. In this case, we just create a composite black. We can enable and disable it on the right hand side here just by clicking on the point. So we can turn it on and off. You can also lock it. Locking helps us to keep it in place. If it's unlocked, then we can drag around the rectangle, which might be disturbing in the artwork creation process. So we just want to keep it locked. Now we can create the first element of our design, which will be a smiley. We go on the left hand side, click on the circle. On the right hand side, we change the color to yellow. So we just put, put everything to the left, except the Y level. Then we have perfect yellow. If we click on the canvas and drag the mouse around, we first create an uneven ellipse. If we want to have an even circle, we just hold shift and we have an even circle. We can now drag around that circle. We can see that there will be a red horizontal line and also a green vertical line. If both lines appear, then you have it centered in the middle. With the yellow circle in the middle, we just now create the eyes. We just create an ellipse as large as we want to. Now we can see the ellipse is also in yellow color. We can simply change it to black by using the sliders on the right. The second eye of course should have the same size, so we just copy it, right click and duplicate or simply Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Then we use the move tool and move it to the right. You can see these red guidelines that help us to align it. We also want both eyes to be equal in the middle of the smiley. So we just mark them both and drag them around until we see the guideline again. Next thing to do is to draw the mouth with the pen tool. Here we click on the pen tool, then we click on stroke and give it a color. In this case we want black. Then we go to smart mode here on the right. And then we just click three times on our image, left, middle, center. And the smart mode will automatically create a curve. This curve has three so-called anchor points and we can select the node tool and just move these anchor points around and the curve will follow along. So just move them around to your liking. I just orientate here on the eyes. And once you're happy with your shape, you can just go to stroke and adjust the stroke width or the thickness of the curve. Just play around a little bit, adjust them to your liking, maybe do some fine adjustments. Just make this a little bit thicker here. And once happy, we just create the dimples here. So same thing, we go to the pen tool, create a little line. Yeah, that looks good. We adjust it a little bit. Once we're happy, we just take it and copy it to the other side. So we duplicate it, move it over, and we, now we're going to right click on it, transform and flip horizontal. Now we have mirrored it. We just align it here according to our guidelines and we're done. Now imagine we want to resize or reposition our smiley. So we're going to mark the circle and we try to move it around. What we see is that we only move around the circle, but the rest of the face isn't moving with it. So a good way to keep everything together is to group objects. So we mark, here we mark everything, which you can see here on the right hand side, everything is marked. Then we right click on it and select group. You can also do this by pressing command and G. 
On the right hand side, all these elements are now one group and if we move it around or resize it, we can see everything stays together. But what we also can see is that the smile is not scaling with the object. So if we make it smaller, the lips get proportionally bigger. If we make it bigger, the lips get proportionally smaller. So to have the lips always in the same size, we need to scale the stroke with the objects. It's pretty simple to do. Just mark all stroke elements. Click here on the stroke tab and click on scale stroke with object. If we now resize it, everything stays in proportion. Now let's imagine we want to change a color. Then we have to talk about fill and stroke colors. Fill colors are represented by the full circle. If the full color is in the foreground and we move around on the scene where case sliders, we can change the colors. If the circle of the outline is in the foreground and we change the colors, we change the stroke color. Right now we can't really see the stroke because it's very thin. If we click on the stroke tab, we can change the width. If we move the slider to the right, the stroke gets bigger. If we move to the left, it gets thinner again. We can also see the stroke kind of eats the image. To improve that, we can also change the alignment of the stroke. We can align it to the inside. If it grows, it goes inside of the image. Or we can align to the outside, where it just grows outside of the image. We already have a couple of black elements that we can remove and create empty space because we don't need to print them for a black t-shirt. You can see them here all on the right hand side. Let me change the background color so you can easier see what's going on. Let me just change it to a mid gray. We can mark all these black elements by just holding shift and clicking on each one individually. Then we go here to the screening mode from normal and we change it to erase. Now we can see the gray shirt coming through. If we change the gray shirt back to black, you can see it's a black shirt coming through. So nothing will be printed here in these areas. Let me show you how you can create additional empty space between the outline and the yellow fill. There are several ways to do it, but this is my favorite. First, you want to duplicate the circle two times, so we end up with three circles in total. On the bottom circle, we want to remove the fill, and we just work with the outline. On the top circle, we want to remove the outline, so we just work with the fill. And in the middle one, we want to keep the outline and the fill, but we set it to erase. Now the middle circle is covering the outline of the bottom circle. To make the bottom circle visible again, we just click on the bottom circle, go to stroke, and increase the stroke to our liking. This creates some additional empty space in between the outline and the fill, which we can see if we turn off the background. Now let's add some text. To add some text, we click on the A on the left hand side, just draw into the picture, and just type in a text. The text is black, so we need to change the color. To do this, we can either simply just change the CMYK values here on the sliders. Alternatively, we can also click on swatches and just use some previously used colors, so we can use the same colors throughout our entire image. Or if you don't want to do that, we can also use the color picker tool here on the left hand side and just move the mouse to our image and click on the color that we want the text to change to. Now let's change our text quickly. Let's make it keep and also change the font because Arial is a little bit boring. Let's look for something more interesting. It will change your text in real time if you just hover over the different fonts. Let's go with Nikki for this image. Now the keep text is above the smiley face. I want to have it behind the smiley face. So we're gonna change the layer position. It's quite simple. We just go on the right hand side, drag the keep text under the smiley face and the text is now behind the smiley. Now let me show you how you can do typography changes. First we want to make sure that the letterbox is active. So the A on the left hand side is activated. Then we look for typography, the if I symbol. This box here opens up. Now let's just move this to the side so we can see it better. We mark individual letters and then we see something that's called stylistic alternative. We just click on it and we can see that letters will change. Often adds a swoosh or removes it. We can go through all the letters by one by one and just see what this font offers us. Not all fonts do have alternative letters, but some of them do have them. Just click on the FI symbol, see what's in there and just play around a little bit. Now that we are happy with our text, 
I want to create the same magenta stroke with the same gap between the letters and the stroke. So I'm going to copy the text layer three times. The middle layer will be set to erase. We create a stroke on the middle layer. Then we create a stroke on the bottom layer, the same way we did it on the smiley text. And we group it together. Let's repeat the same steps on the bottom text where we just type smiling. We can see that the swoosh from the P does peek underneath the smiley. So to get rid of that, we just create a cutout for the text. This is quite simple. We just open the group with the smiley. We copy the middle layer that is erased and we just drag it into our text group. And now the swoosh from the P is not visible under the smiley face anymore. Our base design is now finished. Let me show you how to rasterize this and how to distress the text in the next video. So subscribe to the channel to be informed when part 2 launches. Thank you, bye bye.